So today we are defrosting our fridge. We have the 12 volt um, electric fridge versus the absorption style fridges. From what I hear, the 12 volts do a little bit better as far as icing up than the absorption ones, but regardless of what type you have, eventually you're gonna have to defrost it. We tend to do ours probably every three months or so, but it also depends upon how many travel days we have mixed in. I feel like those just make things um, ice up a bit more. I don't know if it's like going from shore power to going to fully on 12 volt or what. Things also start to get knocked around. And so we've finally dialed in like exactly what temperature ours needs to be set at so it doesn't ice up too much. I think our max is like seven um, and keeping it at five um, tends to do pretty well. But then when things get knocked around, it'll turn the temperature all the way up and I won't notice it for a couple days and it'll ice back up. So anyway, we drug our cooler inside. I'm gonna get everything unloaded into it and then we'll show you what the inside looks like. So I got everything unloaded from the fridge and into the cooler and I can already tell there's some things that I'm going to have to sort through before we put it back in there. This is the perfect time to go through and make sure none of your condiments have expired. All those things move to the back and you kind of lose track of them. So anyway, right now we're basically just going to let this sit. I'm going to open both the door to the freezer and the fridge and just let it sit there. You don't need to rush this. You definitely don't want to try to speed it up by adding any sort of like heat in here you could maybe add a bowl of room temperature water just to the inside of it but you really don't need to i feel like this only probably takes maybe a couple hours to fully defrost once it starts you're going to start to see pieces of ice fall do not pull them down just let everything fall on its own melt on its own you could break some of the components to the actual um, implements if you were to start pulling some of the ice down so um, we're basically just going to let it sit and do its thing. All right. So I've got my temperature turned all the way down. Um, you can see one of the things that we decided to remove, there's normally a drip tray that rides right in here. And the intent is that if you do develop some ice and it defrost, that it will actually catch those drips so it doesn't fall on everything. We actually found that that disrupted the way that the air would circulate. And I feel like it wouldn't get a really good reading of the air temperature. And so things would tend to get too cold. Um, so we decided not to put that in um, a while back and I feel like it's been doing even better since. So we're just gonna go ahead and put some towels in. I'm just laying them in the bottom. And again, we're just gonna rotate through these, um, wring them out as they start to get soaked. Um, and then I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape over the light switch here. Just not a big deal if it stays on, but that way it's just, it's not on for no reason. And we'll come back. Okay, so it's been a couple hours. We got everything defrosted and cleaned. I'm also clean, I took a shower. Um, but anyway, so once you've gotten it all defrosted, use it as an opportunity to do a deep clean on it. Also make sure before you turn it back on that you get it all really dry. So any moisture that's still hanging around there, the moment you start to cool it down, it's just gonna start to like, you know, get freeze up and everything. Um, so just make sure it's dry. And then when you do turn it back on, I don't turn it all the way back on to like that full um, temp that we want. I turn it about halfway, maybe let that sit for a half an hour to an hour before I turn it all the way. I found that that also helps reduce the amount of freeze that it gets. <laughs> 